Hey guys, it's Brandon with Someday Vans and we just got this new product in that we're very excited about. Um, it's a new product from EcoFlow called their, their Power Kits. And this particular kit is um, the four kilowatt hour kit. So it comes with two two kilowatt batteries. And they also have an option of five kilowatt batteries. So you can choose whether you do two kilowatt or five kilowatt batteries and you can stack up to three of them in a system. So if you want five kilowatt, you could go to 15 maximum. If you do the two kilowatt hours, you can go up to six, but you have to use the same type of battery. You can't mix and match two different types of batteries. Um, so these are two batteries. This is their main power hub kit and we'll go through it in a minute, but it's got all the ports on the bottom. Everything is built into this. So this is a 3,600 watt inverter and um, it's got a charge controller in it. It has alternator charging capacity in it. Um, and it also basically like does all that in one unit without having to have fuses and wires and different devices that are communicating together essentially. So next, which what I'm most excited about on this unit is this right here, which is their distribution panel. So this is an AC and a DC distribution panel built into one. Most products out there are one or the other. And this is all pre-wired and ready to go. It's got um, 12 DC circuits available and three AC circuits available. And, and it all gets wired right in pretty easily. Um, and the, another cool thing about this is these first six fuses are um, controllable. So they're remote controlled either through the app that if you're, blue, if you're connected to Bluetooth, you can do that through the app, or you can connect those through their controller. Uh, I forget what they call it here. I don't know, the screen, the, um, I don't know, I'll look it up and I'll figure it out. But this is their screen, and essentially this all communicates directly through the main hub right here. So you've got ethernet cable, plugs in from here, plugs into the main unit. You've got another ethernet cable that plugs from this DC distribution into the main unit or AC and DC distribution. And everything, there's literally like almost no, you're not stripping wires, putting, you know, heat shrink on, changing, you know, having all these different components and everything in here comes in the kit. So when you look at the pricing of the kit, it it's definitely more expensive than something you could get on Amazon and, or even like some are the lower end good products like Renogy um, or like a Goal Zero system where, but you're getting all the cabling, all the connections, you're not having to buy fuses, anything like that. So, you know, when you size it up to a similar system, like especially like we typically do Victron systems in our really high end builds, this is much cheaper than Victron. And the labor, there's like almost, you know, it's, it's much easier to put together. You have a lot less hours in building the system um, and everything is just really integrated into one unit, which I, I'm really excited about. This is our first, by the way, this is our first system that we've gotten. Um, and this is the first van we're putting it in. So we're, we're hoping if this system is everything that it seems like it will be, that these are probably the systems we'll be using in most all of our vans moving forward. Um, it seems to kind of hit all the boxes. It's, it's cheaper than Victron but it's more expensive than say a, a simple system, but it does seem to have the capability to expand. It has a big enough inverter that you can run, you know, a small AC unit on it. Um, that's one of the kind of some of the other products out there. The Goal Zero we have used on some of the smaller builds, which they're great, but they don't provide, you know, you're still building a lot of the other parts than integrating it. They also only have a 2000 watt inverter, which which is fine for most applications, but it's nice to have something a little more capable. So um, all the cabling is all right here. So these cables are very simple. This is their battery cable. So you literally pop the top off, plug the battery in, you plug the cable into, you know, battery slot one, there's battery slot two, and there's battery slot three, or you can use their generator into slot three, but it's, it's there's there's no wiring, there's no, fusing it's just a very very simple solution so they've also got a cable here um, for our inputs on this so we have solar cable which already comes with mc4 connectors that plugs in 
um, down here, which one it is, PVN one or two, they've actually got two different solar inputs. Um, we've got our AC in, so this would wire to your shore power. So this is one of the few wires that you'd have to do is you have to connect these into your whatever shore power port you have on the side of your van and it plugs into the unit. And then we have our alternator charging plug, which um, already comes pre-wired with terminals on it that go, go to your battery, excuse me, that would go to your van battery um, or your alternator, however you're gonna hook into your, your drive system. So plugs right into the, plugs right into the unit and there's like basically no wiring. Again, you know, this is six gauge wire and for the amount of length here, you know, this is $100 worth of wire right here. Each one of these wire connections, when you add up a system that you build yourself, as far as cost comparison, you're probably not far behind this. And if you're doing a Victron system, you're, you're way, way above it. So um, it's just all integrated into one, which is really, really nice. So we are going to install this system in this new van we've got. We've actually been waiting. We've pretty much finished. We're really close to finishing the van um, a couple of days ago and we've been waiting on this system to get here. So it's all pre-wired and we are going to put this system in and then we just have to finish the bed and an upper cabinet. And this van will be probably for rent this summer, we'll see. But um, we're very excited to try this new kit out and see how it goes in. So we're gonna kind of bring you along with us while we're installing it and discovering it. We, this is the first kit we put in, so we're still kind of learning through it, but we're gonna start figuring out how to mount some of this stuff in there and kind of walk you through the process of plugging it in and making sure it all works and, and getting it going. So hopefully it'll be helpful if you're looking at getting an electrical kit into your van. So we got the kit in the van here and we're trying to figure out where everything is gonna be mounted. Um, this is the main unit, so we're kind of focusing on this first and we're gonna go ahead and mount this unit right in this area. So in order to mount it, they've got a pretty easy mounting system. They got this bracket that you mount on the wall and then you slide uh, this unit, you slide the unit down onto it. You got two more brackets, with three holes on the top, three holes on the bottom to get screwed in and then those get also screwed into the wall. So we're gonna start by mounting that unit right here. Um, and then what we're gonna do, we've got all of our wires like roughed out of the van in this corner right here. So this is where our distribution panel is gonna go. So we'll cut out a box here. We're gonna set this unit, I think somewhere right in this area. We have our ethernet cable that's gonna go up to the screen in the front. We've already run it in the wall. So you wanna run this. Um, this specific cable probably should be run before you, you know, close up your wall paneling and everything. And it's running to the top corner where our screen is gonna be. This will get plugged into our unit. We'll also have the other ethernet cable that goes from this unit to our um, distribution box um, that controls those six on and off switches and kind of tells you what's going on from each circuit. So um, we're gonna get started and mounting them. Obviously the batteries are gonna mount here, but we're kind of not worried about those. Those are gonna be last because the cabling and everything is outside. We're gonna start with this. We're gonna do our dis DC distribution panel and, um, and see where that gets us. All right, so we've kind of prepped um, the area that's gonna go here. We've got our main mount right here that the power unit is gonna set on, and then it also gets screwed from the top and bottom. Um, we've got a hole cut open for our distribution panel, our AC distribution box. And then we've also got a hole here that a lot of our wires are gonna go through, like our main wires that are gonna go through from behind this kit. If you want to get really fancy when you when you put it up, you can drill holes directly behind each wire and go straight into the wall. It's a really clean look. We couldn't really do it here because we're we're pretty low. Um, we're getting close to the wheel well there and we've got metal behind there. So we're just going through one hole and we'll hopefully be able to tuck everything in behind. So as far as running the wires, um, obviously it's like any other off-grid system, but it's fairly it's, it's really pretty straightforward. I, I started running wires and I wanted to finish um, on camera. So we've got three inputs into any, any system in a van like this. We've got our solar input, which is right here. This is the EcoFlow cable. I've got it running through the hole and it's going up and connected to the solar panels. 
This comes with the MC4 clips on it already, so depending on how you wire your solar, you can plug it right in. And it's labeled PVN, and we plug it right into PVN on the system right here. Uh, our second input on a van would be your AC in, so that's your shore power plug basically. And so on the back corner of this van, we've got a little 30 amp shore power plug. And um, this cable right here is running to that plug. So this is the um, AC in port. And on the EcoFlow power kit, you've got your AC in. It says 100 to 120 volt. So you go ahead and plug that in. And that's our two inputs. And the third input on the van will be the alternator charging. And so let me look through here. I have not put this one in yet, but where are we at? They're all labeled to what they are. So this is alt in. This is alternator charging in. Since we started this van before we got the kit, um, we haven't run an alternator line yet. So we're actually going to drill through the floor and under the van and then up to a battery or the alternator on this Promaster. Um, so we're going to wait to put this cable in, but this would go right in this first spot next to the solar. Plugs in right there and that's it. So those are your three inputs onto the system. All you have to do is plug them in, run them to where they go. Everything's labeled, everything's super simple and easy. And these plugs are really nice. They've got a little button on the top that you have to push in order to pull them out. They're really pretty high quality, pretty nice stuff. Um, been really impressed with all the quality of the, the products here. So that's all the inputs on EcoFlow. As far as the outputs go from the power unit, we're going out from this unit to our distribution panel. So we've got a couple cables. This is our DC out plug in right here. It'll go through this hole in the wall and we're gonna bring it out this hole here and that will get connected into our distribution panel on the right side, which is the DC side. You've got DC on this side, you've got AC on this side. And with um, you've got a hole coming in on both sides from either the back of the unit or the side of the unit, which we'll do in a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and run this wire. Okay, so this is the DC out. It'll get plugged in right there. And the next output on this is your AC, which is also gonna go to the distribution panel. And you can buy these kits without the distribution panel. You can buy them without the main monitor. Honestly, I it seems to me, I mean, we haven't used it yet. This is our first one, but it seems to me that the distribution panel is like a huge, huge plus to this product. Um, I can see not using the controller because everything you can do on that pretty much do on your phone through the app but I just don't like to always have to get my phone out if I want to glance over at you know what what the unit is doing and we're thinking if we rent this unit out um, if we rent this van out the renters will all have to like get an app and figure out how to use it and whatnot we'll just have a panel in there so this is the AC you'll see it's got standard you know, ground, neutral, and hot cables on it. And this is gonna do the same thing. We're gonna run it through this hole. And this gets plugged in over here, just like that. It's a very pretty, pretty clean plug-in setup. And that, again, will plug into the distribution panel and, and it'll be on the left side, which is, which is all the AC load sides. The only wire left we have to put in as far as this goes, is our communication cable. So you'll see we've got one cable already run through here, and this goes through that hole, and it comes out up at the top of the van, which is where our screen's gonna be. The other cable is gonna go, again, through this hole, but it's gonna come out into the distribution panel. Now, if you don't have one of the two, either the, either the um, screen or the ACDC box. You EcoFlow sends a little, uh, like a little plug that goes in the port. Apparently, the system doesn't work correctly if you don't have one of those plugged in. So you either have to have the Ethernet cable plugged in and using the system, or if you're not using that, they have a provided um, 
little piece that you can put plug in to kind of bypass those. Pull on that. Thank you. Okay. So both of these, and it doesn't matter which order they go in, get plugged in on the side here. One there. One there. And then it's communicating effectively with both the control screen and the AC-DC um, distribution panel. So that's pretty much all how everything's getting wired. I'm gonna basically take all those wires back off. I was just kind of trying to figure out, get everything laid out. And then this looks kind of like a mess right here, but it really is fairly simple. All these wires are our 12 volt, you know, these are our circuits for 12 volt and for 110 volt in the, in the van. And then the only other plugs that come in with the EcoFlow kit are the battery plugs, which those aren't going through the wall. Um, they're a little bit shorter and they get plugged in down here and they'll get plugged into the top of the batteries once those get mounted, but that should all be kind of hidden back in the corner. So we're not gonna run any of that through the wall. I just wanted to get this stuff running. So we're gonna go ahead and try to get this panel mounted and get our power unit mounted up and uh, get these wires in and, and see where it gets us. They do have a template that you can use, which is pretty nice. And it also shows what the clearance above and below for airflow is supposed to be um, for installation to make sure it stays cool. So we went ahead and mounted the bracket already. And then it's got a bra two brackets, one on the top, one on the bottom. They both get screwed in, which we've already installed on this EcoFlow kit. So I line it up. It takes a second, but if you get it lined up right, it should drop into place on, that, um, on the main bracket on the back. And then I went ahead and pre-drilled holes. Again, everything's included in this kit. They have the screws for mounting it right here. And we put this in a spot where we'll have a metal on the back side of the van to actually screw into. So this is a pretty heavy unit. I don't know what it weighs, maybe 40 pounds or something. So you want to make sure you want to make sure that you're getting it mounted really well. Um, you wouldn't want this thing going anywhere. You got the unit mounted, and now we've got all the cables that we ran before coming out the hole here. They all get plugged in in their respective ports. We can kind of tuck everything in behind here and, and you know make it look all nice and neat. All those cables are basically the ones that are coming through this hole. Some of them are out here and they'll all get run into this distribution panel. Now, these panels can get mounted two ways. You can mount them straight on the, on the wood like that, which is fine. But in my opinion, kind of ugly because it is such a nice sleek panel and uh, it's got that really cool little cover on it that's semi-transparent. But a lot of places, especially on vans, this, is, this um, back is a little too thick. So what we did is we went ahead and fabriced up a little ring, just took half inch plywood and fabriced it. We're going to put that ring behind this and then we'll put the panel in. So what that does is it brings the box off the wall, in this case, a half an inch. You could go a little more or less. You could use quarter inch, three quarter, multiple layers of plywood. But, because we would hit the outside of the van here if we didn't add this. So we added this and we set that in there. We'll bring all the um, wires through here, through these two holes or through the side holes probably just because we won't have enough room on the back. It'll be touching the wall. And then now it gets screwed right to the panel and it'll be a flush mount, even though we'll have this fabric, maybe not quite as good of a look, but much better than just mounting it right on the wall. So we're gonna go ahead and start wiring this up, pulling these wires through and getting these, and then we'll catch back up with you when we get ready to wire this fuse panel. So we've got the main power unit installed. It's mounted onto the wall. 
Um, and we've got all the cables plugged in that need plugged in. Both of our ethernet cables over here are um, AC and DC out that are going to the panel, as well as our um, AC in from shore power and our solar in right here. The only one we haven't done is the alternator in, which is gonna go through the floor somewhere. Not exactly sure where yet. So um, now we're gonna move on over here to the AC-DC distribution panel. And this is a super easy panel to wire. I'm really liking how this thing is laid out. Um, basically this panel has an AC side and a DC side. So we've got our two cables coming from um, the power unit over here. And our AC cable is right here. And it's coming up through the bottom. And this panel, it's all pre-wired. This is all, our, all these terminals are already on here. And they get, they're gonna get screwed into these right here. And then the same on the DC side. So we've got our DC cable coming from the power unit. It's gonna get screwed onto these main lugs right here. Terminals are provided, pre-crimped. Screws are provided. Everything is right there, super easy to install. The only other cable coming from this unit is your ethernet line that gets plugged in right up here. Um, and that communicates with the power hub and the main screen to turn these first six controls on right here. So um, we're gonna start wiring this up by in installing these two, the AC and the DC. And then um, we've got our, our lines already separated out. So these are AC lines, they're 110 um, lines. There's an outlet here, a circuit for an out, two outlets, I think, and the air conditioner. And then this side is all 12 volt lines. DC lines um, and if you want to be able to switch those lines on just make sure that you're using the first six even though there's 12 here there's a remote controlled only for the first six but in this van we're gonna be using them for pretty much all the switches in this van I think actually all the switches in this van so as far as lighting um, water uh, water pump there's um, under cabinet lighting that'll be on a switch um, the furnace we like to put on switches in case you need to reset them so um, and then you can change out your fuses um, based on the gauge wire that you have or the appliance that's on that on that particular run so we're going to start wiring this up and we'll catch back up with you when we've got it complete So we've got all the AC and DC um, lines connected. You'll see these nice little um, lever connectors that you just pull up on, push the wire in, push down. They're super convenient. Um, there's different knockouts around the box so you can bring the wires in at different, different angles. But for us, 
we brought them all in on the bottom so that we could rock the box into the wall. Um, this thing's pretty much finished. Um, the only really thing to note on here is that you want to make sure that like once you have everything wired that your fuses and your and your breakers are at the same amperage. So we've got the first two breakers here are 30 amp breakers. So we've got our air conditioning on the first one, but then the other lines would be 20 amp. And in this van, we only have one other line. So it's on the number three. And then these fuses can all be swapped out with whatever fuses um, you, you want for that circuit. So EcoFlow actually provides an array of different fuses. They've got 10, 15, 20 amp, 30 amp fuses. Um, I think 30 amp is the max that you can pull on any of these. So um, once we have all of this finished up, we'll go through and, and change those fuses based on what um, appliance it needs. So once you have it all done, you grab the panel cover, it makes a really nice cover over, over that. And there's six little screws that get put in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. And now you can take the uh, cover that goes over the panel. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and put it right over the top. <laughs> so the last step here is installing batteries. And uh, it's, again, pretty simple process. They've made everything really easy. Um, there is a battery mounting kit, which with each battery, there's a couple different ways you can mount the batteries. Ours are going this direction, and then we're gonna stack two on top of each other. So you've got uh, brackets for the, for the short sides that um, go in like this, brackets for the long sides, that go on the battery like this. They get screwed to the floor. We'll have, uh, we've got little straps that go through these holes and then go up and around the battery. Now the batteries kind of fit in together with each other. So if you look on the battery here on the back of the battery, this is our battery cable. They're fairly short battery cables. So you want to make sure that you're mounting your batteries pretty close to the inverter. Um, but you've got a battery cable for each one. It goes in the top here, and then this, the battery cable will get plugged into our battery spot. If you're gonna stack batteries, you wanna make sure that the cable is plugged into the bottom one first, and then top one will go on top of it. And they actually kind of fit together in a little bit of a groove. So they're kind of made to stack on top of each other like that. And then what we're gonna do is take these cables, we'll run them around, probably around the back side of the batteries, and you plug them in to these three spots. So you've got, uh, we're gonna plug into the first two spots. Again, pretty simple. They go like that and click in. This one will get plugged in there. Uh, again, we'll kind of, you know, make sure all the cables are tidied. And then once we get all this mounted, the only thing left to look at is um, our Ethernet cable up here that we just connected to the main screens. So as you can see, we finished everything up. We got the batteries mounted and tidied all the wiring up. We went ahead and put our bed in and our upper cabinet that we were waiting on for this build. This van's actually like basically done now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the screen up front and kind of the functionality and, and, and then maybe a few pros and cons on this system. As far as install in the back, there's really no other product on the market that gives you this sort of install speed and um, in this sort of plug and play functionality in, in an electrical system. It also looks great, so I don't feel like we need to encase it in a box that restricts air movement, that adds weight to the van. You know, you could put it in a box, um, in like an electrical box, but in a lot of builds, there's probably not really a need to. And um, in our case, we're trying to start getting into builds that are at a lower price point for more people to enjoy van life and to get out there and probably be renting more. So we're looking at ways to, um, kind of simplify our builds, but still offer a great value and great quality in our builds. And I think this is a really, a product that can can hit that really mid range 
um, user. So there are some limitations um, as far as, you know, how fast you can charge through the alternator and, and the DC output, for example, it's not gonna run a nomadic cooling air conditioner because the, your DC output's too low. So there's, there's a few maybe, a few limitations on it that maybe someone would say, I wanna go with a Victron system um, instead because of X, Y, and Z, but for the thousands of dollars of savings in material costs, but also for us more in labor costs, if you're gonna have it built out professionally, um, labor is, is one of the most expensive things in the build. So the more products that we can use that, um, that speed up the build process, the cheaper we're able to build a van for, and that's good for everyone. So, so let me take you up to the controller and we'll kind of go through the interface and see how the, the whole system works. And then we'll go through a few pros and cons on this kit. And, uh, and that's about it. So the last thing we want to show you is the actual screen that you can use to monitor uh, your battery system and control your outputs um, and inputs on it. And in this van, we've got it mounted right here. Um, it typically mounts on a flat surface, but we went ahead and just got a cheap mount and screwed it through the back of the, the screen right here and screwed it to the wall, which allowed us to kind of mount it in the corner here because it was a little bit of an odd mounting location. Um, but otherwise, all it is is the actual um, ethernet port that you plug in here. It powers it, it sends the all the um, data back and forth, so there's no other power requirements or other kind of wires that have to be plugged in to run this. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the functionality of this. This is your main screen right here. You essentially have three places you can go from this screen. You can go to the main system right here. It shows you your full your battery percentage. It also gives you information on each battery that's plugged in. So here we have a two kilowatt battery and a two kilowatt battery. Your third one would pop up here if you had that. Um, you also have voltage and amperage coming into or out of each battery right here. And if there's a if one battery has an issue or something like that, it'll pop up here and show you that individually you can see what's going on in each battery. So that's kind of the just general battery screen right here. And then from here, you've got your input side and your output side of the system. So if we go into the input side, um, like we said, we have three inputs coming in here. So one is the alternator that shows right here, shows your voltage, your amperage coming in, um, everything like that. Your second one is solar, um, which we have plugged in. It looks like we've got 182 watts coming in on solar. Your third one is your extra solar port that if you have um, external solar panels or anything like that, you could wire up to this port. And your fourth one is your AC. So we're not using that extra solar on this particular build. We just have these three. So that's that fourth one is your AC, which is your shore power. So it's showing you how much input you have coming in on each circuit individually. And then if you want to edit things, you can do so right here. You can turn on and off idle vehicle charging, meaning that if you don't want your vehicle to charge while you're idle, some older vans, um, you may not want to have, the alternator may not really be able to keep up or may not be rated for that much current. So you can turn that off. Um, you have AC input current, which is nice if you're at someone's house and you're on like a, say a regular house breaker, you can maybe turn that down to 15 amp and then your system is not going to keep tripping the breaker at their house or at a campground if they're if it's a campsite that doesn't have a 30 amp hookup it maybe only have a 15 or a 20 amp hookup you can turn it down there and then you also have alternator current input so again if you're on an older vehicle maybe you only want to have 30 amp input or you if you have issues with your main starter battery you can program this to not be charging as quickly from the alternator um, that's pretty much the input side and the output side is right here. So the output side is switched into two different categories. You have AC, which you can click right here on the blue. Um, it'll show up a little blue line to show that you're on the AC side, or you can, sh you can be on the DC side. So on the AC side, of course, you've got a button that will turn the entire AC side on and off, essentially the inverter. And then you have each individual circuit. So we have um, our air conditioner on this one and we have an outlet on this one right here. Both of them are pulling zero watts right now, but if they were pulling it, you could tell how much they were. We can turn that off 
and that essentially turns our inverter off. If we switch to the DC side, this is where you have your six controllable switches. So our main lights are on a switch. You click right there, under cabinet lights on a switch. We turn those off. We can turn them back on and you can show see how much each circuit is pulling. You've got our water pump, oops, right here, which didn't kick on yet because the water's under pressure. We have our refrigerator, furnace, this one's not in use, and then we've got fan USB reading lights. I think that's it on this one. So you can switch them on and off right here. Um, I think the biggest disadvantage to this power system and the thing that we found that we dislike the most about it right now is on this screen right here, if you don't exactly touch the button, the on and off switch where you want it, and you touch like the side of it, it will come up and allow you to edit it, which we find as kind of a problem, especially if we're gonna be renting the van out. We don't want people to accidentally be like changing their circuit um, names and whatnot. In the app, it doesn't do that. It has a separate setting where you can go in and edit those on and off. So um, something to think about is that maybe, you know, sometimes it's, it makes more sense to just mount a tablet and run the app instead of using the actual, um, the actual screen that they provide and it can be kind of cheaper in some instances. Um, and again, we can edit this. You can put your DC output voltage. If you click this, you're allowed to go 12 volt or 24 volt. Obviously you don't want to turn it to 24 volt if everything you have wired on it is, tw is 12. And then you can turn your GFCI on as well for the breakers. So I would say that main disadvantage is that is on this output screen where you can edit things. Um, it's also a little unclear to figure out if you're on DC or AC. Um, once you know how to use it, it's not a problem, but it is a little bit unclear. It would be nice to have maybe two separate screens for AC and DC or have them all on the same screen, just have more buttons, something like that. And then the other thing that I guess complaint we could have is that it would be nice if we had a screen like this that showed battery percentage and then also had all your sw your six switches on it. By and large though, it's a pretty good screen. It's the app is definitely um, a little more intuitive and a little prettier, but it's nice to have a, a standalone screen that's plugged in and you know you don't have to recharge it or worry about Bluetooth connection um, like you would if you mounted a tablet in here. So overall, we've been pretty impressed with the system. There's maybe just like a couple of little things that we could critique on it, but overall there's really no other system on the market that's going to do what this can and, and be able to be installed in a reasonable amount of time. Um, and for, and the, and the main thing, especially for DIYers out there or builders like us that don't, I mean, we've done our own electrical, but we don't necessarily specialize in it. It's nice to not have to stock all the wire and cabling and, and then also keep up with all the, the new innovations, um, in that space and, and make sure all the wiring sizes is, is sized properly and all those different things that come with electrical. So, um, Obviously it's not gonna replace a Victron system for a couple of those really top end builds, but I think for the bulk majority of van builders out there or DIYers out there, this could be a, a really, really good solution. So we'll keep you updated as we find uh, find out more, um, kind of how it's working, how we're liking it, and if we start doing, doing more of these. But um, we are a, a dealer for EcoFlow, so if you're interested in getting one of these kits installed in your van, um, or if you, if you wanna purchase it, and install it yourself you can um, give us a call or email us and we'd be happy to to help you help you through that process so i think that's it thanks for watching